What do you think about Vladimir Putin, the man and the leader? Let, let's actually look at the full, you've written a lot about him, the, the recent Vladimir Putin and the, the full context of his life. Um, let's zoom out and look at the last 20 plus years of his rule. In what ways has he been good for Russia? In what ways bad? Well, if you look to the first couple of terms of his presidency, I think, you know, on the uh, overall ledger, you would have actually said that he made a lot of achievements from Russia. Now, there was, of course, the pretty black period of the war in Chechnya, but, you know, he didn't start that. That was Boris Yeltsin. That was obviously a, a pretty catastrophic uh, event. But if you look at then other parts of uh, the ledger of what Putin was doing, you know, from the 2000s, you know, onwards, he stabilized the uh, Russian economy, uh, brought back, you know, kind of confidence uh, in, in, in the Russian economy and financial system. He built up a, a pretty impressive team of technocrats for everything, the central bank and the economics and, you know, finance ministries, uh, who, um, you know, really got the, the country back into shape again and solvent, paid off all of the debts and, you know, really started to... Um, build the country back up again domestically. Mm. And, you know, the first couple of terms, again, putting Chechnya, you know, to, to one side, which was a little hard because, I mean, there was quite a lot of atrocities and I have to say that, you know, he was pretty involved in all of that because the FSB, which he'd headed previously, you know, was in charge of wrapping up Chechnya and it created, you know, kind of a, a very strange sort of system of fealty, almost a feudal system in the kind of relationship between uh, Putin at the top and Kadyrov in Chechnya, and there was quite a lot of distortions, you know, kind of as a result of that in the way that the Russian Federation was run, you know, a lot more of an emphasis on the security services, for example, but there was a lot of pragmatism, you know, opening up the country for business, um, you know, basically extending uh, relationships. I would say that, you know, by the end of those first couple of terms of uh, Putin, Russians were living their best lives. Um, you know, there was a lot of opportunity for people, uh, people's labor, you know, was being paid for. They weren't being taxed. The taxes were coming out of the extractive industries. Uh, there was, you know, kind of, a, a guess, a sense of much more political pluralism. Um, but it wasn't the kind of the chaos of the Elson period. And then you see a shift. And it's pretty much when he comes back into power again in 2011, 2012. And that's when we see a kind of a different phase emerging. And, you know, part of it is the, the larger international environment where Putin is himself has become kind of convinced that the United States is out to, to get him. And part of it goes back to the decision on the part of the United States to invade Iraq in 2003. Uh, there's also, you know, the recognition of Kosovo in 2008 and, you know, the, the whole kind of machinations around all kinds of, you know, other issues of NATO expansion and elsewhere. But Iraq in 2003, and this kind of whole idea after that, that the United States is in the business of regime change, and perhaps, you know, has him in his crosshairs as well. But there's also then kind of, I think, a sense of building crisis after the financial crisis and the Great Recession, 2008, 2009, because I think Putin up until then believed in, you know, the whole idea of the global financial system and that Russia was prospering. And that Russia, you know, part of the G8 and actually could be genuinely one of the, you know, the major economic and financial powers. And then suddenly he realizes that in the West is incompetent, that, you know, we totally mismanaged the economy uh, of our own, the financial crash in the United States, the kind of blowing up of the, uh, of the, the, the housing bubble, and that we were feckless, and that we, that had global reverberations. And he's prime minister, of course, you know, in this kind of period. But then, you know, and I think that that kind of compels him to kind of come back into the presidency and try to kind of uh, take things under control again in 2011, 2012. And after that, he goes into kind of a much more sort of focused role where he sees the United States as a, as a big, bigger problem. And he also, you know, starts to, you know, kind of focus on also uh, the, the domestic uh, environment because his return to the presidency is met by protests. And he genuinely seems to believe, because again, this is very similar to belief here in the United States that Donald Trump couldn't possibly be elected by Americans, there somehow was some kind of external inter interference because the Russians interfered and had an impact. Putin himself thinks at that time, 
It's one of the reasons why he interferes in our elections later, that the United States and others had interfered because he knew that people weren't that thrilled about him coming back. They kind of liked the Medvedev period. And the protests in, uh, in Moscow and St. Petersburg and other major cities, he starts to believe are instigated by the West, by the outside, because of you know funding for um, transparency in elections and you know all of the um, NGOs and others. You know they're operating State Department embassy funding, you know, the, the, and and the, you know the whole attitudes of oh, God is back, you know, kind of thing. And so after that, we see Putin going on a very different footing. It's also somewhere in that period. 2011, 2012, we start to kind of obsess about Ukraine. And he's always, you know, I think, been kind of steeped in that whole view of Russian history. I mean, I heard at that time I was in, I've I've written about this and many of the things that, you know, I've written about Putin. But in that same time frame, I'm going to all these conferences in Russia where Putin is and Peskov, his uh, uh, press secretary, and they talk about him reading Russian history. I think it's this in this kind of period that he formulates this idea of the necessity of reconstituting the Russian world, the Russian empire. He's obviously been very interested in this. He's always said, of course, that the collapse of the Soviet Union was the great catastrophe of the 20th century, but also the collapse of the Russian empire before it. And he starts to be critical about Lenin and the Bolsheviks, and he starts to do all this talking about Ukraine as the same country, Ukrainians and Russians being one and the same. And this is where the ledger flips, because, I mean, the initial question you asked me is about has Russia, has Putin been good for Russia or not. And this is where we get into the uh, focal point of, uh, or, or the point where he's not focusing on the prosperity and stability and future of Russia, but he starts to obsess about the past and you know, start to take things in a very different direction. He starts to clamp down at home because of the uh, rise of opposition and the fact that he knows that his, you know, brand is not the same as it was before and his popularity is not the same as it was before because he's already gone over that you know that period in anybody's you know professional and you know political life that you know if you stay around long enough people get a bit sick of you mm-hmm. you know it's just we talked about that before should you stay you know kind of in any job for a long period of time you need refreshing and you know kind of putin is you know starting to look like he's going to be there forever and people are not happy about that and would like the chance as well to kind of move on and move up. And, you know, with him still in place, that's not going to be uh, particularly possible. And that, you know, it's around the time when he starts to make the decision of annexing Crimea. And that's when the whole thing flips, in my view. The annexation of Crimea in 2014 is the beginning of the end of, you know, Vladimir Putin being a positive force within Russia. Because if you pay very close attention to his speech on the annexation of Crimea in March of 2014, you see all of the foreshadowing of, you know, where we are now. It's already of kind of his view of kind of his obsessions, his historical obsessions, his view of himself as being kind of fused with the state, a kind of a modern czar, and his idea that the West is out to get him. And it becomes after that almost a kind of like a messianic mission, you know, to turn things in a different direction.